What were you taught about prayer growing up? When I was growing up, I was taught that I could come to God with anything that I wanted to ask Him for in prayer, and that I also should bring to God the things that I was very thankful for. We are in the fifth week of our current series, Rebuilt Faith. Over the course of this series, we're looking at rebuilding or strengthening our faith. It all begins with the person of Jesus Christ. Our faith is about having a relationship with Him in which we follow Him in order to become more like Him. Through the course of this series, we've been looking at five steps. That's what we're calling them. Five steps we can take to grow closer to Him. The steps are not boxes we check off and then move on. They're lifestyle choices to integrate into the rhythm of our lives. Taken together, they speak to our spiritual health and strength. Each in their own unique way, with the steps, we develop a Christ-like character. Take one out, and we limit our relationship with Christ and our ability to grow as disciples. In fact, we'll probably never really become fully devoted followers of Christ without each of these steps. Three weeks ago, we looked at the step of serving. Jesus came not to be served, but to serve. To become like Him, we do that too. We look for ways to serve in every environment we find ourselves in, adding value to other people's lives, in our home, in our workplace, at school, here in the parish, and out in the community. Adding value to other people's lives, we become more like Christ. Two weeks ago, we looked at another step, tithing, tithing and giving. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Our heart follows our money. We give back to God in response to His incredible generosity in giving to us His Son. We give back to God in our place of worship as an act of worship, and we give back to God in our gifts to the poor. Last week, we took time to look at another step, engaging in Christian community. Turns out we need friends in faith to walk with us, to encourage us as we follow the Lord. That's why belonging to a parish is essential, and giving small groups a try is especially helpful. Today we're going to look at still another step, a fourth step of discipleship that is the most talked about step of all. It's almost commonplace, the most intuitive uh, of the spiritual habits. It's a habit that's widespread across society and culture. It's found throughout history. Professed atheists even sometimes admit turning to this step. And yet, and yet, despite how ubiquitous it is, it seems it doesn't have the impact it could have and should have. The step we're talking about today is practice. Practice, prayer, and celebrate the sacraments. You know, there's actually a paradox in the church when it comes to prayer and the sacraments. We both put too much emphasis on them and not enough. By too much, I mean we sometimes act as if prayer and the sacraments are the only spiritual habits and disciplines we'll ever need. The only application much church preaching and teaching comes down to is simply pray about it. Just pray about it, as if that answers everything. Hopefully, as you've already seen in the course of this series, there is more to Christian living. There's more to living our faith than just praying about it, even if the prayer is here at Mass. The church teaches that the Mass is the source and summit of the Christian life, which necessarily means something precedes it and something follows from it. 
Serving, giving, connecting in community are absolutely vital to rebuilding our faith and becoming more like Jesus. Without them, our celebration of the sacraments becomes hollow and our prayer formulaic. So on the one hand, the church has put all this emphasis on prayer and the sacraments. But on the other hand, we haven't put enough emphasis on them. We haven't taught them in a way that really seems to make an impact to help people increasingly turn to prayer, increasingly develop an effective prayer life. Neither have we taught in a way that successfully leads people into full and active participation here in the Eucharist. And this might match your experience. Maybe while you've heard about prayer your whole life long, you might not be sure that it really works or really has any effect whatsoever. And as for Mass, your experience perhaps has been uneven. Oftentimes, it seems boring and bad. You find any excuse not to go. And meanwhile, the other sacraments are largely meaningless to your daily life. So what is this step all about? Let me say this. Prayer is powerful. Prayer works. Prayer is absolutely vital to growing as a follower of Christ and knowing His presence in a real kind of way. And as Catholics, we're a sacramental community. The celebration of the sacraments anchor our weeks from Sunday Eucharist to Sunday Eucharist. They also frame the whole of our lives from our baptism to our funeral. They form the center of our community. They shape our community as a church because they are where we most authentically, most powerfully encounter God in Christ. Of course, in one message, it's impossible to even reference the power of prayer and the mystery of the sacraments. Through the ages, saints and scholars have written volumes that fill libraries on the topic. We can hardly scratch the surface this morning. But allow me to offer just three brief thoughts on how to take prayer to the next level, both personal prayer and prayer here at Mass. This conversation and reflection, by the way, will continue in your small group in the coming week. Meanwhile, whether you're in a small group or not, please take time this week to read the section of Rebuild Faith that corresponds to this morning's message. That would be Section 5, Week 5 of Rebuild Faith. Even if you're not going to read the whole book, read Section 5. So, let me offer three key thoughts that are vital to experiencing prayer in a more powerful and profound way. First, to see growth in prayer, practice. We have intentionally called this step practice, and that has a double meaning. We say practice because it is a practice. By practice, we mean we don't see our prayer life as separate from our daily life. People who experience the power of prayer connected to the roles and responsibilities they play in life. Their prayer informs how they live their lives, and how they live their lives informs their prayer. They put into practice what they discover in prayer. For instance, when reading a scripture verse in prayer, a verse on kindness or compassion or forgiveness, they stop and pause and pray for the grace to act with kindness, compassion, or forgiveness. In other words, if you want prayer to be more meaningful and make a difference in your life, put into practice what you discover in prayer. And conversely, bring to prayer the content of your day-to-day -day life. We also say practice prayer and sacraments because, well, it takes practice. Prayer is, pr prayer is like playing an instrument, swinging a golf club, working out. It takes practice. You don't just pick up a guitar occasionally and play well. You have to keep practicing if you ever want to improve. Anything we want to do takes practice. The same is true if we want to see the power of prayer. Jesus' most repeated advice when it comes to prayer was simple. Persevere. Persevere in the practice of prayer, and you will see results. You will see growth. Second, 
To see growth in prayer in larger view of it. Often when it comes to prayer, our first thought is prayer petition, asking God for something, asking God for stuff. And that's certainly okay. That's certainly a part of prayer. And God invites us to come to Him with our needs. But if that's the only way we're thinking of prayer, we're missing out. Prayer is so much more. It's so much more multifaceted. Prayer is about developing a deeper relationship with God, especially here in the Eucharist. It's about getting to know Him and His goodness and His greatness. If you think about your relationships, it would be pretty one-dimensional if all you were ever doing was asking for help or telling people about your problems. Or let me reverse that. If you had a friend and the content of their conversation was always all about themselves and their needs and their neediness, you would pretty much do anything to avoid them, wouldn't you? You'd head in the other direction when you saw them coming. Certainly, you wouldn't call that a friendship. Friendship means we listen to the other person. It means we talk to them. And sometimes, sometimes it means nothing is said at all. We simply spend time together. We hang out together. That's why Eucharistic adoration can be so powerful and so profound. In our reflection and reading this week, we'll be looking at how to view prayer beyond asking God for help. We'll be looking at adoration, contrition, and thanksgiving, as well as supplication. To see greater power in prayer, think of it as more than just asking God for help. Expand and enlarge your view of prayer. Third, finally, to see growth in prayer, remember who you're praying to. This is the most important point of all because it will give us the motivation to pray that we need. The Gospel reading today, which Father Joseph just read for us, reminds us that prayer connects us with the God who loves us and is for us. The context of the passage is a conversation between Jesus and a man named Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee who was intrigued by Jesus and wanted to get to know him better. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Jesus references an, old, an event in the Old Testament Nicodemus would have known well. The Israelites spent time in the desert wilderness, as we discussed last Sunday, after God saved them from Egyptian slavery. But despite God's deliverance and provision, the people kept grumbling and complaining and grumbling and complaining and grumbling and complaining about, well, about everything. The book of Numbers tells us God sent serpents as a result to teach them about the evil of their actions and the poison of their ingratitude. When the people repented of their sin, God told Moses to fashion a bronze serpent and mount it on a pole. It would be the symbol of the consequence of their sin. Everyone who looked on the pole was healed from the serpent's bite. The pole and the attached bronze serpent, by the way, formed a cross. They were looking to the cross to save them. Jesus explains to Nicodemus the same thing will happen with himself. Just as all of us have been poisoned by sin, our healing comes in the cross. It comes in turning to the cross. Though Jesus did nothing wrong and lived a life of perfect obedience to the Father, he bore the consequence of our sin. The cross is a symbol of the consequence of our sin. Whereas the Israelites suffered for their sin, Jesus suffered for ours. Why? He told Nicodemus, God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. Prayer connects us to God the Father who gave his very best for us. Prayer connects us to God the Son who laid down his life for us. Prayer connects us to God the Spirit who proceeds from the Father and Son for us. We pray 
Because as we pray, we grow in gratitude and appreciation for who God really is and who we really are before Him. Prayer changes us. Growing up, I was taught to pray at the end of the day before going to bed to thank God for different blessings of the day and then to ask God for whatever I was hoping for, wishing for, that I wanted for myself or somebody else. And so in, in that respect, I think my understanding was somewhat limited, but, but God was available to us. And I, I, I knew that from, from a young age. It was definitely a process for me to grow, to learn how to listen to God. I was very blessed to be part of a um, Catholic community at the university that I went to. That's where I got introduced to and exposed to um, the idea of having a conversation with God where I'm sharing something with God, but I also allow a moment or a few minutes to listen to God and, and hear what He wants to share with me. Truly being open to Him and receiving the Eucharist at Mass and also being open to His mercy in the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Adoration is such a gift. You get to be your most authentic self and grow in that relationship with Him. You're spending time with the God who loves you, who willed you into existence, and who desires nothing more than to spend time with you, to uh, remind us, to remind me that I belong to Him. And so this unraveling of my heart continues to be something that I look forward to sharing with God for the little things, for the big things, for the questions, for the concerns and worries, for the celebrations, to talk about the things that He has blessed me with that I, I can't believe I, I get to experience. Over and over again, I have felt that, how, how could I say no to that? Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single video. You can be part of our mission to love God, love others, and make disciples by sharing this video. We're grateful you're part of this community.